This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Over the past several videos, we've been building an interactive form. We've added various kinds of fields, and we ended by including a submit button to allow users to send the form data in by email. This is very useful in cases where you want to make the form available on a server and have people send in the completed form at any time in the future. However, Adobe facilitates an organized distribution workflow in which you can send forms specifically to assigned individuals, solicit their responses, and collect and track the results in an automated way. In this workflow, as we'll see, we won't really need a submit button for that process since the submit function is built right into the process. So we'll close this document and we'll work with the file CFO membership final.pdf, which is located in the working files in the chapter 7 folder and in the distribute folder under that. This is essentially the same form with which we've been working, but it doesn't include a submit button. As we'll find out, with the formal distribution process, the Submit button is not necessary because it's built right into the interface of Acrobat and Reader. If we want to distribute this form to a number of specific individuals, it all starts in the Tools pane in the Forms category. We can see an entry here for Distribute. You can see from the tooltip, Distribute PDF Form and Collect Responses. When we click on Distribute, we see the Distribute Form dialog box and it outlines the workflow. You'll notice right at the top a drop down list. There are three ways that you can distribute the form and collect the responses. The first one is to automatically download and organize responses with Acrobat.com. This requires you to have an Adobe ID and a free account on Acrobat.com. You'll distribute the form by uploading it automatically to Acrobat.com and sending a link to your recipients. They respond by going to acrobat.com and filling in the form, either online or with a downloaded copy, and the results are submitted back to you through acrobat.com. The second choice is to manually collect responses in your email inbox. You'll send out the actual form in an email as an attachment, and the users all respond by returning the completed forms which you receive in your inbox and collect the data by opening the response files one at a time. The third available option is to collect responses on your own internal server. If you have a SharePoint workspace or another network folder solution, you can place forms there and allow your users access to the forms where they can fill out the forms and submit them in place right on the server. This does require the users to have read and write access to the network location, so this works well in a work environment or enterprise environment where you have a managed network. We're going to take a brief look at email as an option, but then we'll focus on using Acrobat.com since the mechanics of the process are similar to email and the solution is robust and simple. With email chosen, we'll click on Next, and we have two choices send automatically using Adobe Acrobat, or save a local copy for distribution and then mailing it manually yourself at a later time. We'll choose the automatic option and then we'll click Next. Now we see what is essentially a proxy for an email message that will be handed off to your default email client from Acrobat. We have the message here and we're free to edit this message in any way that we please. At the top, we can add the email names of the users to whom we want to send the message. We can add multiple names here, or we can click To and access names right from our email client's contact list. The subject line here is what the user will see in their inbox, and the message is what they'll find in the mail. The message will include an attached copy of the form ready for them to fill out. When they open the form and fill it out, they'll have a Submit button in the upper right corner in the purple bar in Acrobat or in Reader. We're going to back up at this point and return to the distribution options and this time 
we'll choose Automatically Download and Organize Responses with Acrobat.com. This is a little easier to manage and doesn't require sending attached forms by email, but the way that the forms are handled is essentially the same from the user's point of view. We'll set this option and we'll click Next. Here we'll have to sign in to Acrobat.com using our own Adobe ID. And once we do, we get a message proxy very similar to the one we saw for the email distribution process. We'll be sending an email to the users that we've specified as before. The main differences here are that the user is directed to go to Acrobat.com to fill out the form and there is no attachment to the email message. We can click on Send and we can see the form being prepared and it is extending features in Adobe Reader. This is key. As part of the distribution process, the form has Adobe Reader usage rights enabled automatically. Once it's gone through the process and uploaded the form, it automatically opens the tracker. In the tracker, we have the ability to see the reviews and the form distributions that we've set up. We'll be covering reviews in a later set of videos, but we can keep track of each form distribution status by clicking on the form name here. We can track the status of our distribution, and we can see here that we have three total recipients. None have responded, three have not responded. That's to be expected since we just sent this out for distribution. At the bottom here is the actual list of recipients and their response status. We can go ahead and close out of this tracker, and at any time we can click on the track button in the forms category and go right back to the tracker, select our tracked form, and see the responses over time. At this time, we don't have any responses, so we're going to wait for our users to fill out the forms and submit their responses. In the meanwhile, let's take a quick look at the folder where our form is stored. We can see that in addition to the original form which we started with, we now have two new files. One is a distributed version of the form, which is the copy with usage rights enabled, and the other is a responses file. This is a PDF, but it's actually a PDF portfolio. We'll learn more about portfolios in future videos, but for now, just be aware that this file will contain multiple PDF form data results combined into a single package. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like from the recipient's point of view. Here's Jay Gray's email, and we see the message, please complete the form CFO membership final. And here's the message with the link to Acrobat.com. If we click on this link, it opens directly to Acrobat.com, and right away we can either download the form to fill it out offline, or we can simply open the form in place and fill it out right online within the browser, which is what we'll go ahead and do. As soon as the form is opened in the browser, we can go ahead and begin entering the data. Once the data is fully entered, we're ready to submit the form, and here in the upper right corner, you can see, as we've mentioned, a Submit Form button is built right into the interface. We can click Submit Form, and here it's asking us to confirm the email addresses and the name. We'll go ahead and use the Jay Gray persona, since that's who's filling out this form. Then we'll click Send. We get the notification here that the response was successfully sent, and we can exit out of here, and we're done. Now let's go back to Acrobat, and I'll be myself once again receiving the forms data. We'll open the Tools pane, and we'll click on Track under the Forms category. We'll select the CFO Membership Final Form, and we'll click View Responses. This opens the Responses file that we saw a few moments ago, and we'll see a notification that new responses have been added. We'll close this and dismiss the welcome screen, and we can see the data from the user who's responded, in this case, Jay Gray. Here's all the data from the form right here in a data grid. 
Now this data can be filtered according to the values and it can be exported in whole or in part to a variety of different formats for analysis. This data is presented as a PDF portfolio and as mentioned we'll cover PDF portfolios in detail in future videos. However, what we see here is as additional users respond multiple entries will be added to the grid one for each form that's submitted back to us through Acrobat.com. Since this is an actual file, this is the responses file that we saw a few moments ago, when we close it, we'll be asked to save it. And of course, we want to do that. We can go right back to the track button, and once again, we'll see the status of recipients and who has and hasn't responded. In this case, we can see that we have three recipients that haven't responded out of four, and one recipient has responded. We can see here the name they've responded and the date and time that they've responded. Within the tracker, we have the ability to stop collecting data at any time, thus ending this process, while leaving the tracker intact and the data online within Acrobat.com. We can add additional recipients at any time, and we can send email notifications to all recipients or just to those who haven't responded to our form request. When we're completely through with the distribution cycle, we can delete it right from Acrobat.com simply by clicking this trash can right here. You do have to be signed in with your Adobe ID in order to delete that event. There you have it, a simple and easy way to distribute your forms, solicit responses, collect the data back, and track the status all within Acrobat 10.